Welcome to the JWeb System Settings and Interfaces module. By the end of this module, you should be able to configure JWeb Basic System Settings and Interfaces. The JWeb makes initial deployment very easy. No client software is necessary other than a standard web browser. After the initial configuration, you can return to JWeb for system monitoring and maintenance. The JWeb Dashboard tab provides a quick glance at the system status, alarms, security events information in SRX devices, and utilization information. The Device Administration tab enables you to configure the system in a point-and-click fashion or by a direct edit of the configuration in text format. Help is available by clicking the question mark next to the various configuration options. The Device Administration tab provides standard network tools such as ping and trace route to assess network issues quickly. You can also use the Device Administration tab to perform software upgrades and file system maintenance efficiently. The Monitor tab enables you to view the interface's details and logs. You can view most details related to the show commands of the CLI in JWeb using a point-and-click approach. The Reports tab enables you to generate reports on demand and view them in HTML format. The JWeb interface provides access to the features provided by the monitor commands in the CLI. The Network page enables you to configure the interfaces and routing protocols, firewall filters, and class of service or COS settings. Other options such as security policies and objects, security services, and VPN are platform-specific, SRX in this case. Logging into the JWeb is straightforward. JWeb uses the same authentication methods as the CLI. But before accessing the JWeb, you must enable the HTTP or HTTPS service under the Edit System Services hierarchy level, as shown in this example. As HTTPS is the recommended protocol to use for JWeb access, note that you need to specify how the certificate is obtained to configure HTTPS. The easiest way is to use a system-generated certificate. Juniper Networks recommends that you use HTTPS for web management on any WAN where it is allowed. Note that the JWeb does not come pre-installed on all Junos OS platforms. However, JWeb does come pre-installed on SRX and VSRX platforms. For more information about installing the JWeb package on Juniper devices, refer to the Juniper website. Once you configure a device running Junos OS for access, you can log in using your web browser. When you configure the system to use an external authentication mechanism, such as a RADIUS server, JWeb also uses that mechanism for authentication. Otherwise, it uses the username and password configured on the local system. On devices such as the VSRX, once you log in to the device using the JWeb interface, you are presented with the basic settings page of the Device Administration menu, that is Device Administration, Basic Settings. In addition, a pop-up box called Getting Started appears and overlays the right-hand side of the display. You can stop this pop-up box from appearing in future logins by clicking the Don't Show This Again checkbox. You can always get this Getting Started wizard back by clicking the Help icon, the question mark icon, at the top right corner of the JWeb screen and selecting the Getting Started item from the drop-down menu. On specific branch devices and in previous versions of the Junos OS software, the Setup Wizard appears when you first log in to a device that has not yet been assigned a host name, Factory Default Settings. Similarly, after you use this wizard the first time, you can get back to the screen on devices running older Junos OS releases at any time by clicking Configure, Device Setup, Setup in the top left corner of the Web Configuration tool and then selecting Create New Configuration. In the latest versions of Junos OS software, you can click Reset on the Device Administration Reset Configuration page to roll back your device to the factory default configuration and to launch the Setup Wizard to reconfigure the device. This is the basic settings page you are presented with if you log in to a VSRX. There are six configuration areas that this screen addresses. System Identity, 
time, management and loopback address, system services, security logging, and SNMP. You can expand each of these configuration areas to provision the details by clicking the area title. When you expand the system identity area in the basic settings page, you can set or change the host name of the device, change the root password of the device, and configure the domain name system or DNS servers and domain search for a local domain search list if these are needed. Note that there is a small help icon next to each field name. Hovering the cursor over that icon explains what type of data is expected in that field. Similarly, when the cursor hovers above one of the action icons on the screen, such as the plus sign above the DNS servers table, a description label appears indicating that the plus sign function as create to add a new line to the table. For example, to add a DNS server, click the plus sign above the DNS servers table. A new line is created in a table, and a data entry box appears where you type the IPv4 address of the DNS server you would like to add. Click the confirmation checkmark to the right of the data field to confirm the addition of the DNS server. Note that the configuration changes that you make in this screen still needs to be committed to become active. The Management and Loopback Address section enables you to configure the IP address of the device management port, the loopback address for the device, and the default gateway. The System Services section enables you to configure the access methods that are enabled for management access to the device, the system services that are enabled for access, the ports on the device that provide management access through HTTP, and those that enable HTTPS access. If relevant, which system APIs are enabled, and security certificates that includes adding and removing certificates. With the System Services section, you can enable or disable Telnet, SSH, FTP, Network Configuration Protocol, or NetConf, and JunoScript over Secure Sockets Layer Protocol, or SSL Management Access, to the device using the toggle switches as shown here. It also allows you to enable or disable HTTP Management Access, and if enabled, specifies which ports on the device enables management access in addition to FXP0. The screen has separate settings for HTTPS access. You can enable or disable HTTPS access and specify which ports are allowed this access apart from FXP0. An important setting for HTTPS management access to the device is to specify the security certificate that is to be used for this secure access. The System Services section enables you to select either a system-generated certificate or a local certificate that you can specify in the HTTPS certificate table, as shown here. The Time section enables you to either specify Network Time Protocol, or NTP servers, as the time source for the device, sync the device to the time of the computer, or set the date and time manually. Note that when the time is changed manually, the JWeb session times out, and you need to log in again to the JWeb. There are several additional configuration sections in the Device Administration Basic Settings page, such as Security Logging and SNMP. When all the needed basic settings have been specified, you should save them by using the Save button that is located at the top of the page, as shown here. The JWeb interface then highlights the commit icon. To commit the configuration changes made, click the commit icon and select the appropriate commit option from the drop-down menu as shown here. The Getting Started Guide offers to lead you to the various configuration areas that involve the elements as shown here. You can use the JWeb to configure, add, or edit logical interfaces on your physical interfaces you must have at least one logical interface configured on your physical Ethernet interface. When you log in to the web interface on a router that has been initially configured, you start on the Device Administration tab. JWeb offers an easy-to-use interface for configuring your Junos OS device. Select which configuration hierarchy you want to view or edit in the left navigation menu. Information about that hierarchy appears on the main portion of the screen. 
You can select various options for viewing or editing. You can add new configuration options with the Add, Plus, or Create button, or edit existing configuration options with the Edit button or Pencil icon. These options, along with the Delete button or Trash Bin icon, are located near the top right of the screen. If you prefer to manipulate your configuration with a text-based approach, you can select the CLI Editor tool that is located in the Device Administration tab at Device Administration, Tools, CLI Editor. Another option that is available in the tool's hierarchy is Point and Click CLI, a simplified method to issue CLI commands. This is a firewall filter configuration screen available at Network, Firewall Filters, IPv4. Welcome to the JWeb Device Administration Module. By the end of this module, you should be able to perform JWeb Device Administration. The dashboard provides a quick view of the system's current status and other system-specific details. Customizable widgets are also available, so you can prioritize what you'd like to see on the dashboard. On the Monitor tab, you can view detailed real-time statistics and reports. The Interfaces page in the Monitor Hierarchy provides detailed traffic statistics. Highlighting a specific interface in the table and clicking the View Details button at the top of the screen opens a Details tab screen that provides information about the port configuration, traffic counters, address information, and other aspects that might be configured on the specific interface, such as Class of Service or COS information. Hovering the mouse pointer over various parts of the screen presents you with more detailed information. Use the Reports menu to generate reports on demand. However, you must enable traffic logging to view and generate reports, as shown here. Click Enable Logging, and you are taken to the menu to enable traffic logging. Remember, you must commit your changes before you can generate reports. You can generate reports using one of the 30-plus predefined reports available on the Reports page. Also, there are six groups of reports, each packaging together multiple relevant predefined reports from the existing inventory. They are the Threat Assessment Report, Application and User Usage, Top Talkers, IPS Threat Environment, URL Report, and Viruses Blocked. The Threat Assessment Report group packages together four reports, namely Executive Summary, Application Risk Assessment, Threat and Malware Assessment, and user and web access assessment. The application and user usage group packages together 10 reports, namely top high-risk applications by bandwidth, top high-risk applications by count, top categories by bandwidth, top applications by bandwidth, top categories by count, top applications by count, top users of high-risk applications by bandwidth, top users by bandwidth high-risk applications allowed per user, and high-risk applications blocked per user. The Top Talkers group packages together six reports, namely Top Source IPs by Bandwidth, Top Destination IPs by Bandwidth, Top Source IPs by Session, Top Destination IPs by Session, Top Users by Bandwidth, and Top Users by Count. The IPS Threat Environment group packages together six reports, namely IPS attacks by severity over time, total IPS attacks by severity, top IPS categories blocked, top IPS attacks blocked, top targeted hosts by IP, and top targeted hosts by user. The URL report group packages together eight reports, namely top URLs by bandwidth, top URLs by count, Top URL Categories by Bandwidth Top URL Categories by Count Total URLs Blocked Over Time Top Blocked URLs Top Blocked URL Categories by Count And Users with Most Blocked URLs The Viruses Block Group packages together two reports, namely Total Viruses Blocked Over Time and Top Viruses Blocked. To generate a report, follow these steps. Select the report of the group you want to use and click Generate Report. You can select a single report or multiple reports 
and generate a consolidated report. You can customize the report by providing a name and a description. When you click Generate Report, a pop-up window appears that enables you to customize the report further. Click OK in the Report Generated dialog box. An HTML report is generated, and your browser prompts you to save the resulting file. View the generated report. These are the screens you see while generating a report. The Device Administration Operation tab provides an interface to manage files and back up the Junos OS packages. Under the Files section, you can download and delete log files, memory dump files, and other temporary files to keep your flash memory device from becoming full. The Reboot section enables you to schedule reboots and provides other options for rebooting the system. The Ping Host menu offers the ability to ping IPv4 and IPv6 hosts. You can use this tool to troubleshoot individual ports or ping a remote host. The tool's hierarchy includes additional utilities that enable executing ping, ping MPLS, and traceroute commands. You can use the JWeb Packet Capture Diagnostic Tool when you need to capture and analyze router control traffic on a device quickly. The Packet Capture screen on the JWeb interface enables you to capture traffic destined for or originating from the routing engine. You can use the JWeb Packet Capture tool to compose expressions with various matching criteria to specify which packets you want to capture. You can choose to decode and view the captured packets in the JWeb interface as they are captured, or save the captured packets to a file and analyze them offline using packet analyzers, such as Wireshark. The JWeb Packet Capture tool does not capture transit traffic. Alternatively, you can use the CLI Monitor Traffic command to capture and display packets matching a specific criterion. You can use the JWeb interface to install software packages uploaded from your computer. You can use the Device Administration User Management page to add new users to the device's local database. For each account, you define a login name and password for the user and specify a login class for access privileges.